Hey, what's up comic book collectors? It's Christopher, AKA the Bronze Age Nerd, and welcome to today's video. Before I get to the topic, I do wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Comic Barricade. This is a product that has been engineered to solve a problem perfectly, in my opinion. So basically, if you've ever had a, a comic book box that wasn't completely full, and you've had those comic books start to fall over or lean over, uh, or have to be at a strange angle just to stay upright, then this might be the solution for you. What Comic Barricade does is it is a fantastic little piece of engineering. It's a really hard uh, piece of uh, plastic that has these little teeth on it. You insert it into your comic book box. You press the sides of the comic book box together on it. And then what will happen is it'll help keep your comic books upright by creating a wall, a barricade inside your comic book box. And it'll also strengthen the integrity of a stack of comic book boxes. If you have like three comic book boxes stacked high and you have uh, one or two of these in the bottom box, you're going to get more rigidity in that stack. And that's going to help your comic book stack stay uh, safer too. So that's a fantastic little bonus perk of this product. Comic barricades do come in two different sizes. There's the standard size I just showed, plus there's an XL size, which is great for things like graded comic books or magazine boxes, that kind of a thing. Plus, if you want to save some money today, you can. If you use the code BRONZE10 at checkout over at comicbarricade.com, you will save 10% on your purchase. I really highly recommend checking these out. I think they're going to be a great solution for any issues you have with slumped over leaning comic books uh, that can damage your comic book collection. None of us wants that. And remember, just like Comic Barricade says, it's as easy as insert, support, and stabilize. All right, so let's get to the topic of today's video. And something I wanted to talk about today is something I keep seeing all over the place in comment sections, uh, not just on my videos, but also across YouTube. Uh, I also see it in, in you know various forums, discords, on Instagram comments. I see this kind of repetitive uh, comment about it's, it's the 90s all over again. We're in the 90s again for comic book collecting or a comic book bubble. It's just like the 90s. I see that over and over and over again. And I want to unpack a little bit about what I think that means and why I don't really think that we are in the 90s again. We're in kind of a new thing. Let, let's see what that means. So first, if you weren't alive in the 90s, what happened is there was a, a comic collecting bubble. It was a big deal. You had a lot of people pumping money into investing in comic books. And you're going to say to yourself, wait a minute, that sounds a little familiar. I'm not saying there aren't parallels to what's happening today, but it is a different phenomenon in my opinion. So what happened in the 90s? In the 90s, you had a lot of people buying up tons of copies of a comic book. But you have to remember, speculation was different in the 90s. So what were people buying? Mostly, they were buying number ones. You saw books like X-Men number one, uh, uh, Spider-Man number one, uh, X-Force number one have these massive print runs because people were buying anywhere between two and a hundred copies of that book. People were buying short boxes of those books. And yes, that does still happen today, but it happens for different reasons. People are investing and speculating in comic books in a different way than they were in the nineties. Today, what you're mostly seeing is people buying up based on movie and TV show spec. Now, I might have issues with that in general, but that, that is how people are choosing to invest their money into comic books these days. Primarily, MCU spec. That seems to be the big driver, although you do see some of that driving with uh, DC stuff as well, of course. That wasn't around in the 90s. People, again, they were buying these number ones. So you had companies like Marvel putting out these crazy wraparound hollow foil, you know, the hologram covers uh, with, with glow in the dark and all kinds of stuff. And you had all these number ones, uh, series starting over and over again. And yes, series do that now as well. And it does sell books, but it's not the same kind of thing that we saw in the 90s. So in the 90s, where you really saw this come from, mostly, in my opinion, was sports card collecting, especially baseball card collecting. It was a huge deal. You had a lot of money being pumped into sports card collecting. And you also saw massive print runs there. And this created what is collectively known as the junk wax era of baseball cards. And it also resulted in a crash in the baseball card market. This seemingly kind of uh, followed, a, followed a parallel with comic books because comic book collectors were buying up tons and tons of copies. And what happened is they saw the baseball card market crash. Remember in the 90s, most card stores uh, were also comic book stores or vice versa. You saw a lot of crossover card and comic stores. It made sense. It was a natural kind of pairing, right? You know, they easily saw what was going on there. In fact, a lot of those people were the same, you know, they're, they were buyers of both things and they would see that, you know, Oh God, the, the, the card market's crashing and it caused them to, to get skittish. You also had Marvel going bankrupt. So a lot of the, the engine that was going there, the, the big powerhouse of investing 
kind of all toppled down by the uh, kind of the mid to late 90s. And another thing that happened too, you got to remember Marvel, a ton of their creative con uh, creators left and went and formed image comic books and started self-publishing their own comic books and creating that kind of independent vehicle for, for all these comic book creators. So you had the market kind of spread out. You had all these different factors. There's also some great videos that have been done about this topic. I'm not necessarily going to cover it in super big detail, but what I will say is to basically leave it at that was, that was the circumstance that happened back in the nineties. So how is today different? What happens different today? Well, most people are speculating based on first appearances or they're speculating based on what they think could be a big deal for future um, uh, movie releases. And they're, they're kind of investing in that sort of uh, way. They're also investing in Silver Age keys or, or, or older, you know, n notorious characters or characters that they love or characters that they think have a future. They're investing in those books as well. So that's more of what you're seeing. You're also seeing less people doing it. So this is a more concentrated group of collectors. And most of them, by the way, were collectors in the 90s. So they very well remember what happened back then. And they're investing in different ways. They are, you know, think about a print run like uh, X-Men number one, which probably had approximately like an 8 million print run. Uh, I've heard different numbers. Or a book like Spawn number one. Or, or some of these other books that just had massive print runs. Well, we don't have those massive print runs anymore. In fact, it's, it's pretty rare that a comic book has... Oh, especially over like a 200,000 print run. Uh, and it's even fairly rare for comic books to have an over 100,000 print run. Um, it does happen, of course, but but it's just not common. So that's 10 to 100 times less than what we were seeing in the 90s. So there's less collectors doing it. And on average, I think those collectors are going after more key books. They're not trying to just shotgun against the wall and see what sticks uh, as far as which books to buy. So I think you have collectors being smarter they're armed with more information. They're more targeted as far as, as uh, what they're collecting. Um, and by the way, not a lot of information is good information, but they do have more information. So that I think is a huge key difference to why this isn't the 90s all over again. Now, where I want to go with this video is even though this isn't the 90s, that doesn't mean that we're bubble proof. It doesn't mean that we're not going to have a crash. And that is what people are talking about when they talk about the 90s. I do think we are going to have a market crash. I think it's coming actually relatively soon. I can't put an exact date on it. I am not a financial guru. I'm not a stock market guy. I'm not, you know, I, I can't speak that language extremely well, but I am observing the market and I'm listening to people who know a lot more than me. The, the Warren Buffetts of the world, the people that really know what they're talking about, um, the Michael Berries, they're talking about inflation causing a, a bubble that's going to basically be the longer this bubble goes on, the harder the crash is going to be. And we are probably going to see that trickle down to every type of financial sector, your cryptocurrencies, your NFTs, uh, your collectibles like comic books. But why am I not too worried? Why am I not selling off every comic book that I own? It's because I think that we're, we're in a different time. It took 20 years for comic book collecting to truly recover back then it was a really hard thing for, for people to kind of get back into. Um, and, and it kind of is pretty recent that we've had people get back into it, but the, but the discussions, the fervor, the collecting it, that's happening now is much different than what happened in the nineties. And I have more optimism that what's most likely going to happen is minor books. These flavor of the week books are probably going to fall off a lot faster. And your, your, I don't like the term blue chip, key when it comes to that because I've never loved that term but you know the, you guys will understand what I'm talking about if I say that you know your your X-Men ones your AF-15s those sorts of books right those established keys those I think are going to continue to perform as well if not better and the reason why is because in a down market you have people wanting to take advantage of a down market and what are they going to want to take advantage of a sales dip on books that were hard to achieve and hard to um, actualize in their collection beforehand and also for investment purposes too of course so those people are going to be going after those books still your hulk 181s you know your giant size x-men's um you know all those books people are still going to be looking for them they might go down i think that that's going to be a very temporary bump in the road for those books and i i don't think even you know um uh minor keys more modern characters i don't think that they're really going to get hit as hard as some people fear i do think that there's still going to be room for those characters I think where you're really in trouble is your nothing book that's 9-8. You know, your, your people are slabbing stuff like crazy. 
and they're they're expecting to get returns on it. We've already seen, by the way, over the last couple of years that that's caused dips in those prices and values for those books. And I think that's going to continue to be the case. If, if a book didn't matter, people aren't going to care about it. You're going to get nothing for those books. And I'm not just slabs, too, by the way. Raw books, the same thing, like, you know, uh, uh, cover buys, those sorts of things. They're going, to, they're going to be affected by this a lot more than a truly valuable key. But I don't think it's going to be the end of comic book collecting. I don't think we're going to have a 20-year period where people aren't going after comic books. Those people are hooked. And they're hooked in a different way than they were in the 90s. How do I know the 90s are different? Let me tell you one way I, the 90s were very different. My father, uh, great guy, he, he loved collecting baseball cards. And he took me down to a comic book shop. He was not a comic book collector. He did not like Superman. He took me down to a comic book shop and waited in line with a line stretched around the, the comic book store and uh, outside waiting to get in to buy copies of Superman 75, The Death of Superman. No one's doing that today. No one's running out to buy a book like that in the same way that they did back then. The non-collectors aren't putting their money into the market. Um, you're not having that kind of, uh, almost that crazy inflation of comic book um, uh, collecting in that way. There are certainly some, some ways that could be true, but it's not the same thing. It's not civilians, people off the street, whatever you want to call them. They're not running into a comic book store to buy uh, something as Killing All Children 24 or whatever. Uh, because they hear something big is going to happen in it. They either were already into comic books, or they enjoyed that character, something like that. So that's a key difference to me. You don't have people that are just throwing money in. Now, you could argue that you do have people that are doing like things like fractional shares for mega keys, but I think that's more of a consequence of things like crypto, of things like NFTs, uh, and that kind of concept. And I don't think that's the same thing. I don't think it's a one-to-one. -one. Now, again, I do think we are heading for a market crash. Uh, I said this a long time ago, actually. I, I thought we were going to be experiencing this. And I, I think it's still coming. It's just a question of when, uh, not if, in my personal opinion. But at the end of the day, it's not the 90s. And I think you should approach, you know, the people that are worried about it, the people that want to sell off their entire collections, uh, get out of comic books or, or whatever. Maybe it's time to reevaluate how you collect comic books or how you invest in comic books. I have no problem with you doing that. I, I would highly recommend it, as a matter of fact. But I don't think you should treat it like it's the 90s over again. I think it's a little bit different this time around. Okay, but I am super curious to see what you guys have to say, to see what you think. And I want to hear about it in the comments below. I'm super excited to talk with you guys about this topic. And there's probably going to be more content kind of coming up around this, I think. Uh, some follow-up kind of stuff about the market and, and what's going on. Because I think we're in a very pivotal time right now. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you want to go uh, check out the description, I have some ways you can save some money. We talked about Comic Barricade, a brand new sponsor for the show, which I'm really excited to welcome to the Bronze Age Nerd family. Uh, I also have some other sponsors down there you can check out as well. Some other ways to save money on things like Gemini Comic Supplies. You can save money over at Dangerous Waters Comics. You can save on cleaning and pressing over at Turlock Comics. Lots of ways that you can save money down there. And you can also join the conversation and become part of my Discord or go follow me on Instagram and check out the comic book stuff that I post over there as well. If you want to get a hold of me, message me through a direct message on Instagram is the best way to do that or hit me up over at my private Discord server. We'd love to have you over there. Thanks so much for watching this video and I want to remind you as always, hey, 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 hey. Read comics every day.